Hey, 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 test one, two. Looks like everything's good. I figured, you know, it's, uh, I know it's uh, Tuesday, but I'm still thirsty. <laughs> so that means that we should uh, maybe have a couple of drams and uh, kick back, relax. I'm going to give it a minute. For, uh, I did not plan this. Uh, I just uh, thought, well, I'll, uh, set something up and just let it rip and see what happens. Hey, Tom, that, that was really fast, man. I appreciate you stopping by. I just got the Glen Scotia 18 today. Oh, you bastards. <laughs> I'd love to try the 18. Now, I, I have heard that some people don't like it as much as the 15. I would like to know your take on it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you've already had the 15. Um, if you do it as much as I do, I am going to get into a bottle today that uh, might be um, – interesting to you. I've heard good things about it, and um, there's a couple things that make me kind of iffy on it, but, you know, it is Glen Scotia, so I think it'll be okay. Hey, Rabbit, good to see you, man. It's been a while. Um, I think you were the one in either Virginia or D.C. I can't remember which one you were in, but it's good to see you, man. Um, I, I, there's another guy named Redemption that I've spoke with, I think he's Virginia. I think you're DC, but I, I might be getting them, you guys mixed up. But uh, either way, it's good to see you. Maybe he'll drop by later on sometime. Um, I was just kicking around and I thought, hey, it's Tuesday, I'm off tomorrow. Happy uh, July 4th, a happy uh, birthday America. And uh, I wanted to start things off right with a couple really good dreams. Um, maybe a bonus later if we feel like it. Oh, okay, DC, gotcha. Um, yeah, I've been um, doing some sample, uh, some salsa trading with my friends, uh, generously Paul. We'll also, not only will we look at the uh, Glen Scotia Victoriana, which is a non-A statement, but a supposedly well done one. And we'll get into that in a second. Uh, we also have got the McAllen Rare Cask, 43% natural color, most likely chill filtered from what Paul was thinking. And I thank you, Paul, for the, uh, um, the salsa there. And uh, we're going to compare it to the black. We've also tried the, uh, the Kellen Rare Cast Black uh, not too long ago. And I got my notes pulled up just to see. I'm not going to look at them till afterward and see the similarities and differences. Because supposedly, um, this is the, the Rare Cast does have a nice color to it. It's uh, natural. It's, a, it's kind of a dark gold. I don't think it's as dark as the black, per se, um, from my, going off memory, but um, this one doesn't have the smokiness, supposedly, that the other one does. But this one has different notes. We'll take a look at those, too. Hey, Loch Ness, good to see you. No, no problem going live, man. I was getting the itch, and I thought, well, you know, let's celebrate the, the birthday of America in and, and the right way. And... Uh, my uh, mom sent me a new shirt. She went to Uranus, uh, Missouri, <laughs> a place where they make really good fudge. <laughs> I'm not joking. She sent me this fudge. I'm like, this is outstanding. Where'd you get it from? <laughs> Long story short, um, they they said I have to wear the shirt this time. I'm like, that's fine. I don't mind. It's really good fudge. So if you ever get to Uranus, Missouri... <laughs> You got to try the fudge. Anyway, ooh, Lockness is trying the, uh, just enjoying the Glen Scotia Double Cask. Quite good, and I agree completely, especially for the price point you get. The glass Glen Scotia is what I would consider maybe their starting off uh, point. They really emphasize the Glen Scotia Double Cask, the... Um, they sub the you know Victoriana as their NAS and the 15 is their normal age statement. Now the 18, that's the one that uh, Thomas Sippin is known. It's just not you don't see it as often. You might have to do a little more digging to get it. It's not really part of their basic core, which is those three that I see usually. Um, but all of them I've heard are great. Uh, I have had the uh, the double cask and I and I really liked it, especially for the. Uh, you know, for the um, all the the cola notes and a little, it was a little strange to me at first. I never really had a Glen Scotia, and Glen Scotia has its own profile 
is not only just being a part of Campbelltown, they're outside of Springbank's, you know, Hazelburn and Long Row series. They're they're their own distillery, and they're not like Kilcarran either. Kilcarran has more of a interesting bourbon, floral, fruity profile. This has more of a cola, uh, savory, but yet still balanced with really good sweetness and um, a little slight smokiness, things like that. And then, of course, Springbank has your leathery dunnage warehouse kind of thing going on. Um, I don't know much about Glen Scotia the, the, the way I do uh, Spring Bank as far as how they do their malting and how they do their uh, their deal, but the presentation is nice, I have to say. it's uh, They do a, a hell of a job, even though they don't spend, I don't think, a whole lot on marketing per se. This They have like a – this is their rebirth in the last couple of years from what I've heard, and they uh, – Seem like they 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 are doing a pretty good job on the uh, subtle marketing side of things. I have to say, and if this is even half as good as the fifteen, which I've been sipping on the side, warming up, then uh, I think we're in for a big treat on this guy. And of course, McAllen, it's hard to uh, beat some of their higher end stuff. I'm not a big fan of the pricing, and we'll. We won't get into that, but as far as the quality, I have to give them credit. It's uh, they have some good stuff. Uh, Richie Z uh, really enjoyed that bottle. Which one? Is, I missed Richie Z's comment. Where is he? Is he here? Hey, Mark. Good to see you, man. Are you uh, are you uh, back in Indiana, Mark? Or are you still on, on uh, vacation? Adrian, good to see you, man. I'm glad you were able to stop by uh, from California. It's uh, probably a lot easier to deal with my time, uh, late times than uh, some of these guys, and I really appreciate you stopping by either way. Let me know if you've already had the Glen Scotia Victoriana, what you thought of it, and uh, I'll take a look at those notes later. That's good that you got home safely. I saw some of your fish pictures, man. You were tearing it up out there on the, looks like you were doing some saltwater fishing, I think, from a pretty big boat, and uh, hope you had a lot of fun out there. So we'll take a look here. Yeah, Campbelltown, man, is one of my favorites. And, and next to Isla, it's definitely, you know, if I had to pick a second favorite, I think it's my second favorite area. Uh, this is going to be a non-age statement. That's the only nick, really, I would ding on it. It came out in 2015 as part of, like, an international rebranding. Uh, like I talked about earlier, that they re were starting a new rebrand. Uh, period and the cast were selected from its reserve cellar to have one is considered very Victorian value hence the name for their individual characteristics then married together in a barrel that's been given a heavy char it's bottled without chill filtration which is good which it is one here non chill filtered and um, I am fairly certain that these guys aren't doing coloring on this guy uh, I can't say that for a fact fact but I don't suspect, looking at that color, that it's um, really all that in the darker sphere. But you never know. Until you really know every detail, you can't really say one way or another. But um, if it tastes great, I'm not going to complain too much. Let's see if, uh, if we have any more. They don't really talk about bourbon versus sherry. Um, I'm going to suspect, though, that this has uh, most likely a, a little bit of both. Because it just says the casks, you know, are, are chosen and then do, they do the heavy char deal. But um, from the, the profile that I'm thinking that we're going to get, if it's like another Glen Scotia 15 or the double cast, it's going to have a marriage of the, of the two types, uh, bourbon and sherry. But we'll see here. It uh, holds a uh, viscosity really well, and uh, it's got some nice, real thick legs afterward. Not, not, not anything out of the ordinary from what you expect from a decent scotch. And this is going to run you about ninety bucks. It's not crazy, but you know, it's not a uh, cheap, a good, you know, middle of the road. And and if, if I'm guessing right. I've heard this has a smokier profile, so hopefully, I'm being hopeful here, this will be 
maybe on the lines of a Ugadal by Ardbeg, but you know, I'm not gonna say that yet. I'm gonna, you know, go in and see what we got here. Now this guy is gonna be 51.5. So we're on the higher end of the ABV, but I'm happy with that. I, I'm not complaining and I prefer it to be around that than uh, 40 or 43 by all, uh, oh gosh, they're, you're wearing a bourbon hat telling something that you didn't like bourbon. Well, my mom and uh, stepdad sent this to me and um, they're, I think they're trying to remind me of where I came from and I, I can appreciate a decent bourbon, actually, if but it has to be one of the really nice, not so, I mean, I know, I know a lot of them have corn, but the less corn, the better. I had a Colonel Taylor uh, bottle them bond not too long ago, a, a friend sent me. It's really hard to find. I think it was a four green. I, I, I think that was the name of it. It was really good. Um, I love the High West uh, rice stuff, but... Uh, I'm trying to think of uh, another. I did have the Four Roses uh, LESB. Um, it's a small batch, I believe, and that was uh, pretty good too. So I, it might be kind of growing on me on the side, but they have to be not your typical bourbon, but more of like a real refined, I won't say classy, but you know, higher end bourbon, I think, for me to really get into it because those are the ones that are going to have a lot more of a spectrum of flavors than your typical vanilla, orange, you know, uh, caramel basic deal. Uh, that's, I think that's why I like scotch so much is because there's so many other flavors you get. And I've been letting these sit out for a bit. So we're, I think we're good to, to take a little nosedive and see what we got here. I'm looking up at the comments on, on occasion here. Uh, Dram dude was saying, yeah, it's a whiskey of the year one. Which one uh, is the whiskey of the year that you're talking about there, Dram? I missed, I think, the comment earlier before. Hmm. Out of the gate, this is a little more subtle of a nose than I expected it to be. But I am used to the Isla Pow in the face, Ardbeg, Kilholman, you know. That doesn't mean that this is going to be a letdown. It might be a little more refined, delicate. We'll see how that goes. But the first note I got was kind of a, um, I'd say, a um, Concord grape along with a cola, which is kind of, of Glen Scotia's, I think, their basic profile uh, 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 right away. More red, red ruby fruits too. Really nice. Um, little, little sugar, not confection, but more like, um, like sugar in the raw, kind of like your uh, sugar cane kind of thing. There's some earthiness in there. Hmm. Really, really nice. Some floral notes in the side. Not a not anything overwhelming or in your like pow in your face per se, but uh, hmm, I'm trying to dig some more out of it. I think some cream, some custard. I think a little taste might help me out a little bit here. Mmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. The, the palate is, that might be a subtle nose, but that palate doesn't play around. That is good. Completely different experience. Uh, uh, it's, it's interesting. I think a little taste is, let me get a little more, um, maybe a little nuttiness in there too. Hmm. The palate, man, is powerful. I'm gonna have a little, a little drop. It is 51.5, so we have a little room to uh, go here. Let me get my uh, little dropper. I'll be right back. I apologize for the uh, delay. Okay. But yeah, I think it needs just a, a couple of drops just to get it to 
open up maybe a little. It's, it is good meat. I'm not complaining. Um, but before I even go in for another one, I'm just going to take just a little baby drop, maybe, if I can do it here. Let's see what we got going. Just a couple. Just to get it to open a little bit. Wow. It, it, the first taste, the first uh, sip, the first thing I got was a big, nice oat cake with cinnamon in it. And something else going on there, too. Hmm. Very spicy as far as um, kind of has some, like, cherry cordial along with some spiciness, like some um, spicy, uh, like ginger snaps. Hmm. A nice smoke. The smoke comes on the back end, I'd say. Would you say maybe more as a pan? <laughs> oh, man. Um, hmm. Slightly, maybe some marzipan, uh, almond notes. Uh, it's definitely got a nuttiness to it, but I think it's more of a cashew than a uh, marzipan or an almond note. It's a little more, a little earthier, I have to say. A little more of a, a true, like a pecan, like a like like legume. Is that what you call those things? Yeah, don't tell Lee I'm adding any water. He'll freak out. <laughs> Yeah, but it's literally just, I mean, we're talking like two baby drops just to, you know, get the molecules flowing a little bit. Takes a little bit of that cut, you know, burn off a little bit. But, I mean, even, I mean, I didn't, I didn't lose anything from it being neat. You know, I did sip it neat first, so. Hmm. That is, uh, that is nice. I love the, the fact that they went in for a higher BV2. I think the, the 15 comes in a 40, I want to say 46. Before I definitely say that, let's take a, a quick look so I don't make a liar out of myself. Hey, Tom, what is the uh, ABV on that 18? I'm, I'm curious uh, you're sipping for the Glen Scotia. I'm assuming that it's also like a, a 46, but uh, I could be off. Let's see, Glen Scotia. Uh, well, if I could make sure I'm actually doing it inside the window would be helpful. Let's go uh, 15. I'm pretty sure that's a 46. Yep, I was on 46. 46 for that too. Yeah, so that um, so this is nice that they put a little extra oomph in it. Not cast strength per se, but you know, close enough to make it very interesting to play with when it comes to the strength of it. I like a, a stronger assertive flavor, so. <laughs> That's true, Mark. I heard the same thing that uh, a lot of those guys know to taste a lot more. Wow, that's nice. Um, to taste a lot more of their own stuff, they get it to extremely low ABV in order to um, also um, be able to go through a lot more of their product, too, you know. Wow, this has got a nice, um, a nice effervescent on the back end as well. Not only with the cola and the chocolate, the cherry cordial, the um, the cashews, the honey, you know, the vanilla, the usual, you know, those kind of notes too. But um, there is a nice marriage of sherry and bourbon in here. I, I, I can taste it. Um, and that brightness in the end. I'm trying to think of what to compare. That it's almost like a creme brulee. A really nicely done one that's got that real nice uplifting bright taste at the at the very end. That finish is nice too. I, there's a little slight bitterness, but it's not bad. I like I don't mind a little slight bitterness if it's balanced well with everything else. And this is comes from like a almost like a deep walnut into the to the finish. Hmm. Nice flavors. I think even Andrew, I think, would like this one, believe it or not. I 
I'd be surprised if he didn't. It's not overly sweet. It's got some really nice caramel chews in there too. It's very, it's, it's pretty complex, especially for NAS. I'd love to know what their uh, age, you know, is, but I have a feeling they probably took a little bit of 18, a little bit of 15, a little bit of their double cask and uh, charred the hell out of the uh, end of it. And that's where you're getting a lot of that uh, nice smoke, I'd say. It might not be as smoky as an Ugadol, but man, it is, it is, it's one of their definitely better offerings, I'd say, the, next to the, uh, with the 15 and the, and the double cask. It, it fits right in pretty well, so I see why they, um, they did this one. Hey, Tom, give me some notes on your uh, 18 that you're sipping. I'm curious to see what you're getting out of it, or is it too early to give us a little taste of some of your uh, experience there? I'm as curious. Yeah, this, it, this comes in at about uh, 90, 90, I think, is I can actually tell you here. Give me one second what I ended up having to pay on this guy, unless they did a, a sale afterward. Um, they might not even have the Victoria on it beforehand. I don't think they did actually. Um, I'm guessing that this was about 80 ish, 90 at the most. It definitely was not over 100, I can tell you that. Uh, or I probably wouldn't have gotten it. <laughs> Andrew's known for the sub 40 range. It's hard to get a good whiskey for sub forty, man. I mean, I mean, he, he can't get an Ugadol or a Corey Vrecken or uh, hell, he can't even get a freaking. Um, I mean, he could barely get a quarter cast, maybe, but that's that's really if he if he's got the same taste as I am, man. He's screwed if he's sub forty range. <laughs> the pinch, the dimple pinch. That's horrible, man. Yeah, I, I can't think of anything back here that he would even like. Other than maybe the R Big Ten, the Lafroy Ten, the cast strength is around sixty, so that's out of the question. Triple Woods at least sixty, if not seventy. I've seen it even, even as high as eighty, which to me is way overpriced. I would say it should be more of a sixty-ish uh, quarter cast. You can get a good deal, forty, fifty bucks, but uh, anything else, man. Uh, I can't. I can't think of any other Islas that run that low. That's a. That's a tough one. Did you? Uh, you got any notes on that uh, eighteen yet, uh, Tom? I'm just curious to see if they're similar to what I'm getting off this uh, Victorian at all, or if it's a completely different experience. He patiently waits for one of us to come with an art pick. <laughs> yeah. No, I understand how that goes. This hobby is not cheap, my friends. Not even close. <laughs> It takes a lot of work, a lot of patience to find good deals. Um, I found another good deal today. I'll be doing a review later on. It's the Glamorangie Milshan. Um, it's a sweet dram, I've heard. If you're not into sweet drams, you're probably not going to like it as much as I would. Um, I was willing to take a gamble on it because it was an earlier private offering. It's from 20. 16 the two cell was 2015 i love that it's i think it's really good their newer version the spios and the astar were both uh good from this year so i thought hell you know they still had a bottle of, they had one bottle of the milchon left i was like might as well take a gamble and see you know uh none of my friends liked it because they don't uh, but I, I think it's because they don't really like a lot of the sweeter stuff like i do so we'll see how that goes uh, I, I don't mind it being you know any one flavor as long as it's not just all floral or all bitter if it's like sweet or peaty or smoky or a combination of all three and it's pow in your face i'm probably gonna like it that's that's the way i look at it usually i will hold off my notes until the bottle opens up more and give it a fair shake no that's cool that's a good idea because if, if, i forgot which bottle it was recently i was looking at a bottle and uh I was thinking, uh, wow, this is kind of uh, not as good as I interpreted it to be. But the longer I let it sit out, it got a little better. It was the oh, it was the um, 
probably butchering the pronunciation of this because I've never heard it spoken, but Tinnick, the T E A N I N I C H, uh, flora and fauna bottle, a 10 year. Uh, I just opened it up, I just was pouring some samples, uh, and um. I, I let it open, I thought, but I don't think I let it open up as long as I should have. Because my first initial nose and sip was all over the place. It just wasn't there. And I think maybe I'll reapproach it and add on to my review. I just did a review on distiller.com about it uh, being quite a up and down experience. Like the nose at first was like, eh, it got a little better at the end. And then the palate was just not there but the finish came in and, and kicked ass it's kind of one of those weird i don't know i think it's just not my my you know wheelhouse my profile that i like and um a lot of floral things are going on with that bottle and just could not get into it like Ness says i need to have a open house scotch tasting well honestly guys if, if any of you are ever in a dc uh, slash i'm more closer to annapolis maryland if you're ever near annapolis maryland it's i'm just a, a you know phone call slash email text away um a lot of you guys know how to get a hold of me i think already uh my email is telex at outlook.com that's t-e-l-e-x at outlook.com Feel free to let me know if you're in the area and you're more than welcome to stop by. And, and I always keep stuff in case I run into something. It's funny because, and I'll have to tell Mark about this story. It's pretty awesome, actually. One of your viewers uh, and I clicked from the get go. Uh, I was on your all's uh, on the Scotch for Dummies um, channel. I was moderating, I think, at the time, just, you know, hanging out. And this guy named Tosh Jnoss, D H. N O S S. He's from Tibet originally. He was like, "Hey man," I, and this was back a year or two ago. He's like, "Hey man, I got I got this uh, tip that they were going to get the kelpie, uh, and at this uh, particular place in Virginia, they're going to have you know the, the committee release. They're going to have like X amount of bottles, but you got to get there early and get it." I'm like, "Oh okay." Well, I was not a big fan already, but I didn't know how ridiculously rare this stuff was going to be if I didn't get it right off the, the bat. And I took him up on his uh, tip, and I went over there, and sure enough, they had you know a couple bottles left, and I snagged one. And um, ever since then, since he gave me that tip, and I know where to go, that's how I got the the groove since the committee release so early. And uh, I let him know how thankful I was, and he uh, he lives in Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, one time he's uh, he was out and about, and I was like, hey, you should stop out and come out, and and we'll shoot the shit for you know couple hours or whatever and, and you're more than welcome to stay and, and have a drink or two and he ended up coming over we hung out for like five or six hours just drinking he brought like three or four bottles and i already had you know a stuff a lot of stuff that he was uh itching to try so we ended up trading samples and and you know just uh uh trying each other's stuff in person and uh it was really fun, so I have to have to give you a cheers, Mark. For you know, I would have never run into this guy uh, if unless I you know met him through the chat, like you guys are at. You know, just just talking about what I liked and what I didn't like. And uh, yeah, he owns a he runs a um, the beverage program for a really nice Indian restaurant in D.C. Um, I've got his card. If you're ever in the area, let me see if I still have it. I apologize, Tosh, if I, if I don't. I'm pretty sure I do, though, because I don't throw things away like that typically. Or I might have, you know, put it in a different area. But just in case, let's see if I have it handy to tell you guys what the restaurant at least was. Um, I'm not sure if I have it with me, though. I have to make room for, like, dental card crap. You know how that goes. Uh, appointments and whatnot, but uh, I'll have to look it up uh, and see. Hey, everyone, good, uh, good to see you, man. I'm glad you came in from uh, Ocean City. Well, wow, that's that's a nice uh, deal. Uh, we got to hang out there. Uh, been, I think it was last uh, later towards the end of summer, uh, beginning of fall last year, but. Uh, I'm glad it was kind of in the off season. It wasn't as crowded because I have a feeling that place gets cray cray in uh, 
in the uh, summer, deep summer like it is now. Uh, everyone, does it pretty nuts down there? <laughs> Are you sailing? Yeah, that's a good question for Mark. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is pretty nice. Did uh, everyone? Did you uh, miss the uh, the Victoriana notes I was talking about? I might have to do a a, a show rewatch, but it's 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 I recommend it. It's a higher ABV. Might not be a, a year statement, age statement, but lots of complexity. I could pick out like ten or eleven things off the bat, and um, really nice sip. The only thing. If I'm not ding it on anything, I don't know. That's a tough one. It's got a really nice smokiness to it. It's not peaty, so I think you would enjoy it, uh, everyone. Uh, it's more of a smoky flavor. If you don't mind the smoke, I think you're in for a treat on this one. But if you're not into smoke, you're not going to like the Victorian, I have a feeling. But we'll have to uh, get you a sample, or if you're ever out this way, that beach with family too hot to sell last week or so. Yeah, it has been a – today in D.C., it was 97, 98, and it felt like uh, the heat index was 110 degrees. So it was it was horrible. I walked to get some Thai food, um, and uh, it was it was hard going. Uh, it was it was rough. Uh, he's drinking a Balvenie 15 Sherry Cat stuff. All oh, that stuff is great, I bet, yeah. What's that bottle run? Do you know everyone? I'm just curious because I have a, I mean, that's not my only beef, just kind of like with McAllen. I like their stuff, but it's so pricey a lot of the time. What is that Balvenie 15 Sherry run, uh, if you don't mind me asking? Because um, I'm not I'm not going to bash their stuff as far as the, the quality, but I have a feeling it's going to be uh, pricey. Oh, yeah. I told everyone that if he's looking for a nice um, – new glass that he wants to try that he hasn't done before, but he's going to be impressed with. I think the ball blair 99 or even uh, if you can afford a 90, it's I'm sure it's fantastic. I've only had the 99, but uh, the, um, the, um, they even have an Oh one. I've heard that's pretty good or Oh five. I can't remember which year it was, but uh, how does it compare to the 15 telex? The Victorian, it's smokier. It's uh Maybe not as refined as the 15, but it's still got, I think it might be a little more complex than the 15. Uh, I could pick a little more out of it, I, I, I think. Um, it's got some sweetness. It's more savory, though, I think, than both the double cask and the 15. It's definitely more smokier. That's one of the major notes I noticed that were different. Mm -hmm. It's got that great Glen Scotia profile with the cola and the um, the grapes, the Concord grapes. Um, that's still there. It's got more chocolate, dark chocolate uh, fudge almost with this one. A little bit of cherries. Um, definitely some, some custard, vanilla, some uh, creme brulee kind of stuff going on. I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan, especially the higher BV. It's a 51.5, so it's you know, it's it's a, uh, it's it's pretty damn good, I have to say, on a on a rating one to five point two five increments. Wow, man, it it wakes you up. It's um, I love Glen Scotia. <laughs> it's one of my favorite new new to me distilleries, I have to say. I'm going to slap a 4.25. It could use some age. And I think that that would add maybe at least a 0.5 on it. So 4.5, 4.25. I'm kind of debating on which one I would go with with this. It's got a nice color that doesn't seem like it's fakey. Um, it's not chill filtered. It's got a nice char smokiness to it. If I'm not in the mood for an Oogadol and I want something smoky, this is something I could go with and be completely content. I'm sure if I smoke cigars still, it would go well with that as well. Um, man, it's a, that is that is a tough one as far as the rating, but the toffee and stuff, it's it's really well done.
I'm leaning towards a 4.5. I really am. It's really that good. It would be a five if it was an 18, 21, you know, year more refined. That's the only thing um, that you might be able to squeeze another 0.5 out of to make it perfect. You know, that's what we're shooting for. Hey, Malta, good to see you, man. <laughs> hey, Swami, you drunk bastard. <laughs> <laughs> that that comment was actually mon uh, filtered, moderated, but I showed it anyways. The Swami was here. <laughs> Lord, it's been hot that hot here in Ontario, Canada too. Believe it or not, yes, Canada can get that hot too. Yeah, it's weird. This this heat has gone all the way up to where Swami is in in uh, Montreal as well. I've noticed. I mean, it's horrible. Yeah, you like my uh, my uh, my new. Uh, this is <laughs> my mom got me this shirt. I told the story a little earlier, but I'll, I'll tell it one more time. She, she is going to, I, I pronounce it Uranus, uh, Missouri. And she found this place that has a great fudge factory. <laughs> so she sends me this big, like two big boxes of fudge. And I'm like, I hope this is like edible. <laughs> and it was actually some of the best fudge I've ever tasted. So even if it comes from Uranus, you gotta get you some fudge, and they got me a T-shirt from there. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> Route 66, yeah. Oh yeah, Swami did a, a Route 66 venture. Uh, did you do like some live shows during your trip there, Swami? If I remember correctly, I'll have to go back and take a look at some of those. I'm sure it was a good series of uh, different stops. Of st I mean, if I had the vacation. And I could go all the way through, man. That would be a hell of a, a, a fun thing to do, especially if you had somebody else to do it with. Uh, that would be pretty kick-ass. I have to try that sometime if I ever get that much leave. I think I'll have to be with the government for a lot longer than I've had. So it's going to be another like at least. I think I've what I've I started with them in '04, but I was a contractor in '04. So if I went on in, in oh, let's see, in '10, '18, '8. I'll probably have to be there another like 20 years. <laughs> oh, you didn't do it yet. Oh, okay. Well, that'll be a great show, man. When you get a chance to do that, I have a feeling I would love to, uh, to, uh, you know, take a watch and maybe do a live with you if we can do it starting in two weeks. Is that when you're doing it, Swami? Leaving in 16 days. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I'll definitely, uh, we'll take, uh, Take a look, and everyone else that you're watching, that's watching and watching later, please uh, check out Mont Malton and Montreal's channel. He uh, he got up to a thousand, I've heard, and uh, congratulations on that, Swami. So, mean, I'm way behind, my friend. I got a lot of catching up to do, but slowly but surely, it's not a race. I'm like a turtle. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> this is Swami's favorite. <laughs> We're gonna look at the Macallan, the rare cask, natural color. Most likely chill filtered, though. This is a uh, was a gift from Mr. Uh, Generously Paul. I really, really appreciate it, my friend. I would never be able to afford the stuff unless, you know, I had help. And that's one of my beefs with McKellen is the price is just way, way too high. You're, you should be down a little bit down here. That's just my opinion. Um do I think it's worth, you know, a couple hundred dollars? Maybe, you know, that's, that's close. Like that final 21 is, is awesome, but I'm not going to pay four or $500 for that when I can get something similar. Like, I don't know. I mean, it's tough. I mean, a lot of those whiskeys are about four or $500, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, I just can't justify spending more than two or $300 at the most on, on liquid, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe if I make any more later on, I'll think differently about that. But we did have the black before. Very good. It was smoky, and I had some notes. But I'm not gonna look at those yet. I'm gonna go ahead and try this. Uh, have a little palate cleanser first, and see how uh, we go with the uh, with the uh, rare cast by itself without the black. The black's a travel retail exclusive. This one is more. Uh, available it's just on your higher shelf you know your higher end uh priciness uh, deal but at least it's not a doll more right swami <laughs> i 
I do like Dalmore 18, so I'm not I'm not a like a hundred percent Dalmore basher, but you know some of the other stuff is not not in my radar, but that 18 is pretty good. But we'll get to that some other day. I've got a, a sample of that that uh, we'll have to take a look at. So we had fun with the Victoriana. I would definitely recommend it. I think it's worth a buy. Glen Scotia is pretty damn awesome, as is the other Campbelltown distilleries. I think everyone should try all of them, really. The Kilcarran, the Hazelburn, the Springbank, Longbrow, Glen Scotia, you know, Kilcarran, also known as Glengall. All those guys are, are, are really good. It's too bad there's not more offerings from Campbelltown. I think it's a really nice place to do uh, business. They used to have a lots and lots of distilleries back in the day, hundreds, and now we've got three major ones, and that's it. It's kind of sad, really. Hopefully that will change in time, but I'm not sure. Let's get back on track with this guy. Now, this guy is a lower ABV, which kind of is a little minor letdown. It's 43%, though. It's not 40, at least. I'm, I can't completely lose my mind. The most likely chill filter thing kind of throws me off, or as much as you're paying for some of this stuff, you would think that it would definitely not be chill filtered, and you would think it would definitely be 46%, but you know, you know how it goes. Um, these are first fill sherry casts that have been maturing at the distillery um, of more than a thousand barrels aged in the industry's finest, most exclusive and expensive casts. Only 1% of the whiskeys made it the cut and were chosen for their depth of favor and color. The bottles are printed in a swank gatefold box, but we don't really care about that piece. Uh, well, if we're showing it on the shelf, we do, but when you're just talking about the liquid, we don't. That's the way it is. Um, first fill sherry is all I'm really getting from this guy. I don't see anything about bourbon or anything else, but um, supposedly it's going to be pretty damn nice. From the other reviews I've I've heard about, I haven't heard about any notes though. It does hold a its a shape well. Uh, legs are are pretty non-existent for a long time, and then all of a sudden you get a good inch separation from each one. And uh, nice nice color. Well, they're not playing around with that nose. Now that is a nice nose. Wow, it's nice, nice, nice uh, ruby. Um, ruby fruit was like the first nose uh, with cinnamon on the back. Some other spices in there too. I have to take some time to decipher that, but definitely cinnamon, maybe even some ginger. Some floral properties going on in there. I'm trying to separate the fruit. I mean, there's strawberry, raspberry, deep the deep red zone. Definitely some sugary goodness going on in there too. So so far so good. Um, yeah, I found most McKellen way overpriced, but I think the classic cut is good value. I gotta try that classic cut one. That's that's one that uh, I haven't had that uh, might be a, a possibility. But yeah, that's the thing. It's like I'm, I would definitely not just run out and buy anything that um, you know that's that's over a certain amount. But um, some of the real basic stuff, like the twelve, didn't blow me away either. Like if if, if I had to, if, if if I can get a Glendronic twelve. For the price, I can get a, a McKellen 12. I'm definitely going for the Lundronic, hands down. No joke. E easy easy uh, decision to make there, in my opinion. Same as, like, uh, if it's a higher-end thing, I'm going to go for, like, the Abelara Abana versus, uh, you know, a cast-strength McKellen if it's uh, – unless it's, you know, better. But I haven't heard of any of their stuff being, for the price, being, you know, that uh, that good. The work crest is incredibly overpriced, yeah. It's not a bad nose, though. I mean, I give them credit. It's not a bad experience, but it's a good point. Is the is the experience worth the price? Hmm. 
it's sweeter than I expected, but that's not a bad thing for me. But, you know, I know some of you guys don't really get into the sweeter ends. Uh, Swami likes the, the addition too. Sadly, I'm not very, I'm not very well versed with McCallan other than um, the 12. They had a, I think they have like a triple, I might be thinking of the Balvini. There's a triple 15. Um, I've had the uh, red cast black. I've had, this will be another one uh, in the final 21. But I haven't had a lot of their mid range stuff. It's either been their lowest or some of their higher end stuff. I haven't really had any of their, uh, I need to get more into like the 15 area and see. But with the price, it's, it's kind of, eh, you know, is it worth hitting a, a McKellen 15, anything, final 15 or 17, or their basic 15, 17 versus, um, you know, something else that's priced that you can get maybe even an older, like Glen going 21 or uh, something like that. Is it worth, you know, the difference there? Uh, I think you're talking about Jason whiskey wise. Is that uh, who it is? Swami on the edition four. He's a big, I can tell he's a huge, uh, he gets into like um, both McKellen and Glen Warren G a lot. And I think, I'm not sure if that's because he works for any of those guys or used to, or if um, he likes some more sweeter profile like I do maybe, but um, I have to check on that. See if uh, I know he's uh Jam G's not a fan of their American Oak heavy stuff. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think I would get into that. I'm not a really big Woody, uh, Woody note fan unless it's really well balanced. Final series are bad. <laughs> that final twenty-one. I, I mean, I like the. I, I thought it was a pretty well refined and had that like attic smell, kind of like, but like a not like a crappy attic smell, like a nice, well preserved. Had you could smell the age in it, but that was an older twenty. It was a twenty-one. I haven't tried any of their uh, 17, 15, 12 fine oak series. Uh, I can't speak to those, but uh, that 21, though, I'm sure is way overpriced. Uh, I mean, I think he paid five or $600 for that. And that, to me, that's like, if I had that, I would definitely go for the Arbig 23, hands down. Arbig 23 is like my favorite dram of all time. And that is just as much as that final 21 um, from my Kellen, uh, from, my, from my memory. It's like five to $600, but that, uh, that's still crazy money for, for liquid. <laughs> the only 15 sherry cast very rich and the ABV is 47.5 and sure all 15. That sounds good. <sighs> Risky throttle. Thanks for talking about man. Swami says, I love the classic cut. Reminds me of Mac 12 with a higher ABV old school Mac 12. Yeah. I can see that. I, yeah, I got to get my hands on that. It's, it's, I've heard it's only like $80, $90. It's not a crazy expensive bottle either. The classic cut. Um, if I remember correctly, Dramdy says, I mostly mean I don't like when they use American Oak. I like the stuff that's better than they use all, at least the high proportion. Okay. <laughs> the Quercus Alba is uh, Dram's favorite, it sounds like. That is good stuff. That's more of the vanilla like properties than the. Uh, more bourbony, just woody notes from what I remember. All right, let's go for a little little sip of this. Hmm. It's a little, it's funny because it's only 43, but it tastes hotter than a 43 off the get-go. The initial palette, I was kind of, kind of like, eh, not as, as, as good as I thought it was going to be. The, the tail end got better. More of the caramel and the sweetness and the toffee, the apples come through, but I think going for another first initial experience, sip and see, it's more... I say better, but something else is going on there.
Wow, it's really the first to, to me, the first notes I get are a little more bitter. Almost like a um, really like more bitter nuttiness uh, initially. And then it goes into more of the sweetness. And but I'm not getting as much fruit on the palate as I thought I would. It's more of either nuts, a little bit of bitterness, and um, maybe some chocolate, dark chocolate, not sweet, but like kind of bitter dark chocolate. Maybe some mocha, like some coffee, espresso kind of note. Very, all the first experience is kind of bitter. And then it finally subsides and then you get your sweetness. But it's really on the tail end, closer to the finish than the actual palate. The uh, the chat thing, uh, it, it, uh, it <laughs> Swami, it, it automatically moderated your your thing that's why you don't see it <laughs> good to see you uh um who is that oh daniel that's that's whiskey throttle sorry i thought it was somebody different that was in there too the um yeah, you gotta be careful what you say uh, i don't put words that they mask in there but they automatically mask certain ones for some reason, I'm not sure if it's a setting somewhere. I've got I got to tweak that. Um, classic cut was a bit disappointing. It tastes like cast strength double cast. Huh. So Dram was not a big fan of the classic cut. Interesting. I've heard mixed reactions to that one. It's uh has that flat soda taste to me. That's not good. Yeah, this one has a certain bitterness to it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in for one more try and get a, try to get it finished and see what I get. That was better. My head, maybe, maybe I uh, didn't give it enough. I mean, I, I let it sit there for quite a while, but maybe I didn't uh, have a little bit more. Maybe I didn't have uh, enough. Of, um, of it sitting out just yet, but that doesn't make any sense, really, because I had it sit out for quite a while. I'm thinking it just has more of uh, a bitterness than I, I, I would want, but it's not it's not horrible by any means. It's definitely got a lot of complex flavors, but are they all the flavors that I want comparatively to the, the black? I think I enjoyed more because it had the smokiness that kind of went together with it and um uh, you know more cohesive way if that makes any sense that i didn't i don't think it masked it I, don't, I just think it blended the the maybe some bitterness and some fruit and i got more fruit flavors out of the, the black than i get with this one everything here is more nut um forward than fruit floor to me it's just my my interpretation of it huh not bad but just not what i expected not what i would usually go for let's have a couple more sips and just make sure i'm not losing my mind i don't think there's any children watching swami <laughs> i hope not at least especially at this hour <laughs> Yeah, I, I know it's crazy. I mean, it's good. And Paul, I'm not, I'm not bitching. I, I promise, not even, not even slightly. I'll add a little couple of drops to this just to see what, what else we get. Maybe the sweetness will come out more. It does come out in the finish. It's a nice, really nice, um, toffee, caramely, vanilla-y, strong finish, and a one more of a sweeter note. I like that finish. It is long. But that initial palette is so damn bitter. It's got that really ultra dark chocolate and the toffee, but more like burnt toffee and like burnt mocha coffee and dark chocolate that's like 70, 80 percent. It's just I don't know. That's that's my only my only thing is, you know. Damn. <laughs> Let's just give a couple of drops for our last little sip here and see if it makes any different. I'm hoping that we get this one. Um, 
maybe with a little water it'll help the, with the bitterness. Got on fear winds all. Hey, uh, everyone, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, happy Fourth to all the Americans out there. And um, hmm, this is going to be interesting. The Oloroso one, which uh, what are you asking about there, uh, Dram? Oh, it's still try that one. Are y'all talking about a different bottle? It sounds like, huh? It beats the nine barrel. Uh, which one are you talking about, Swami? Um, yeah, that that the my initial take in that nine barrel barolo was was really good, and but then the it didn't get better toward the end of the bottle. To me, it didn't. It actually, and I get it didn't get bad, but it didn't get better. It got either maybe a little worse with oxidation. I'm not sure. It wasn't a. It wasn't as good as that initial sip or two, but sometimes that happens. Oh, the Hazelborn 13. I need to get that one. Um, I'd love to try an older Hazelburn, but I do miss that little slight peat. That I think it helps with spring banks and long morn, uh, long rose, sorry. Um, but we'll see. I've only had one Hazelburn. I can't complain about it. The Barlow cask itself, I could taste it. I know some people said they couldn't really get the Barlow like wine cask out of it, but I thought that was pretty forward. It was just the other notes didn't really over oxidation. It didn't really still meld as well for me. And on the initial palate, though, was great. It's just over time, it wasn't the same. It seemed like but that's just me. Let's see if this gets any better, but uh, damn, I love that that Redcast Black. I'm just surprised I'm not into the regular one as much. Not not bad, but not what I expected. Yeah, oh, my. That is wild. Nose was good. Palette was a bit of a letdown at first. All the bitterness, but it does go into a really nice finish is, is sweet and perfect, but wow, it takes a while to get there. That's what I'm only... The great thing about certain whiskeys, the Lago Volan 16 being like kind of a bitch mark, is I always try to find that whiskey that's going to give me that three to four hour finish that I don't want to have anything else. It just tastes great. It sits there in my mouth, and I can, you know, do whatever, and I'm still content. I'm still tasting it. This does have that quality to it. It's just, you know, after the pleasant nose, when you're doing the actual drinking, that's that's the part that's really throwing me off a little bit. It's wild how that works. I never had a whiskey like that where I'm, I'm kind of intrigued at the beginning. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I taste it, and I'm kind of like, oh, gosh, this is not cool. But then the finish lures me in and, and, and reels me in, and it's like, yeah, this is what I want. <laughs> it's kind of... It's like a schizophrenic in a way. It's weird. It doesn't know. It doesn't know. Well, I guess it knows what it is, but it's like two different things that are kind of clashing almost together. That's a that's a tough one there. I'm not definitely going to score the sneer as high as the black, in my personal opinion. But it's it's not bad. I'm, I'm thinking more like. What did I give? Um, and, and just to give you kind of a comparison on the uh, notes I had for the Redcast Black version, um, that was more of uh, the nose had molasses, brown sugar, toffee, vanilla, and heavy Concord grapes along with some floral properties and even some subtle smoke. So that was just the nose by itself. And the palate had it was even better, which tells you something right there. It brought like root beer, sassafras, milk chocolate, raisins, figs, and a very long finish that came in waves of honey and hazelnuts and cashews and delicate floral notes. So it was almost torturing how good it was. And and that's that's a completely different dram than this guy. Um, 
as far as uh, the the notes. I mean, there are no nutty notes at all, hardly in that one. This one, to me, has a boatload of uh, different types of pecans and cashews and walnuts and, and stuff in that initial palette. That's just wow. All right, take care, uh, Loch Ness and Swami. Good to see you, man. And uh, thanks for stopping by. That's um, that one. I gave it a five out of five. It was one of the best rams. Uh, top two or three I've had was the Redcast Black version. This guy, I'm going to put. I think more towards like a three point seven five, only because of the bitter qualities I get from that initial palette. It might edge up to a four, but it's a uh, it's a tough one, man. It's 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 really it's it's really complex, and just because I don't personally like something doesn't mean it's not good. That's that's the tough part when it comes to rating some of this stuff. Um, because I don't want to give people the wrong idea that it's like lacking something. It's just that bitterness is a little forward for me in the in that first part of the palette. And I think I might go with a four. I think that's fair. It's really good. Not everything I was looking for, like the black, but it's it's definitely something I would much rather drink this than half the whiskeys I've had. So that tells you something at the same time as well. <laughs> Are you heading out too? Oh, I mean, everybody's quitting on me. Oh, it's okay. It's 12 o'clock, I guess. We did get a good hour in. Something like that. Yeah, it, it kind of, uh, it's a good, it's a good time to, to wrap things up. But, um, I tell you what, I, I really enjoyed this Victoriana. Um, I mean, it's got, it's got some 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 issues to you know bring it down to I think I'd give it a, a four point two five if I'm remembering correctly or four five. Um, the McKellen surprised me. I thought it was going to be more of a four point seven five four point five, but um, this is more of a solid four I think. Just just personal preference of flavor and uh, experience. But hey, you know if I saw this and it was affordable. I think I would definitely have it on my shelf, you know, and uh, at least have it for a, an occasional sipper. It's not something I would drink very often, but uh, it's an interesting experience because that, that finish is so nice. The finish is almost good enough to say hell with the palate. We don't need the palate. <laughs> that's that's why I'm fighting with in this particular dream. It doesn't happen. Um very often at all if it ever has maybe once or twice that I could think of it's a similar experience like that but, um, first of all problems is what I call it <laughs> well thanks for stopping by Dram dude I really appreciate it and everybody else still watching and uh, we'll still get together um, hey thanks Ryan Richardson for stopping by if you haven't if you're not a subscriber already please click the uh, subscribe button um, give me a thumbs up if you don't mind if you have the time and uh, I'll be going live again I think on Thursday evening if uh, the dummies are still having their show which I think they are uh, this week and uh, Mark's probably already long gone I have a feeling because usually he'll uh, be in and out but uh We'll take a look at a couple other ones I've got over there sitting ready to go and uh, can't wait to get into some more uh, different offerings that I haven't even opened up yet so that'll be fun well it's lunch of all night uh, Dram and anybody else and I'll see you uh, hopefully Thursday evening uh, Scotch Redemi is going at 10 Eastern I'll be there at 11 Eastern as usual and uh, have fun